All right, so let's go ahead and get started. We have the team from Transaction Hash Dome here. Uh, I think they came here like, was like a month or two ago? Did you guys have the first uh, little AMA in here? Yeah, it was uh, close to uh, We were just yeah. getting started. Yeah, so they, they came in here, um, they were just getting started. Um, so now they're to the point where they're wanting to do their uh, initial raise. And so I think that will be going on here um, either today or tomorrow, if I'm correct. Um, but I think they'll let us know more about that today. Um, but yeah, um, I'm pretty sure they have a lot to share with us on all the updates they have done um, in between, you know, the last time they came in here and now. So I'll give them the floor. Um, but do you, if you don't mind, just go ahead and introduce yourselves again to people that, you know, may have not been here the first time. And then you can go into, you know, the project and what you want to talk about. Uh, yeah, for sure. So thank you, first of all, for having us and uh, everybody coming to our AMA today. Uh, my name is Boyan Petrovic. I originally came from Serbia to the United States in about 2002. Uh, I lived in North Dakota for about 18 years or so. And then uh, I recently, in 2019, I moved down to uh, uh, Florida. That's where I'm at right now, uh, Boynton Beach, Florida, to be specific. Uh, we I started on the crypto, I guess, in, uh, in 2019 as well. Uh, I did a little bit stock exchanges and here and there, but uh, I left that once uh, I've seen basically the scandal with the GME, AMC, and et cetera, the whole uh, the government influence with that, right? So I took my assets. I moved uh, most of it to the Binance. I cashed out some, of course. And uh, yeah, so I started with that. Uh, then I learned about uh, altcoin, so to say. Uh, I started with uh, my first altcoin was a safe moon, actually, right? So I'm sure a lot of you guys uh, are familiar with it or actually still hold some, right? And uh, but uh, but yeah, so I joined them. I found out about them through uh, say. Uh, through TikTok, and uh, I figured, you know, invest a little bit, and I actually worked out fairly well for me. Uh, I moved uh, from Safe Moon to Elongate and some other projects as well, but uh, <clears throat> I ended up in the uh, project called INDC or Nano Dogecoin. I uh, started off as an investor. I got to know the team uh, really well. Uh, actually, their CEO was from uh, Miami, Florida, as also. So I, um, I not uh initially so to say joined them but i did a lot of work for them i was uh, actually a shiller myself and i'm not talking just a regular shiller right uh, we had a <clears throat> we had a team we had a plan actually one of my uh, top shillers right now is a co-owner of this project right so after the uh, indc or nano dogecoin uh, we moved to a project called uh, meta ruffy uh it's uh, i joined them uh january 16th right so January 16, joined them. Uh, I left the team March 22nd, and uh, that's where I got the idea for our project. So uh, do you want me to co continue talking about the project, or do you want to ask some questions? No, yeah, I just wanted uh, for people that, that hadn't weren't here in the first AMA to kind of just have an introduction into you and the, the project itself. Um, but, yeah, uh, uh, do you want to kind of let people know, like, you know, what, what kind of you guys – are going to be offering here with this project utility wise um you know you like you said you mentioned you know how you got to this point of the project but like you know what what what, do, what can people expect out of this project um you know what are they investing in you know what what's going to be ready um you know when this goes live etc things of that nature yeah sure so uh we have a project that's uh, fairly large right so first of all uh, i know the name is not a you know a meme name i like to call it right it's not uh, something easy whatever but uh so the name is so to say very literal uh, tx standing for a transaction hash has a double meaning you know it could be a hashtag from twitter or something like that or it could be a hash uh, mining power right so crypto related and the dome is basically uh you know everything under one roof right so we want every transaction to be safe and under one roof and uh yeah that's literally you know a literal translation of the uh of the name so <clears throat> a little bit about the project right so we have a platform that uh, basically we're trying to hire uh well to onboard freelancers and uh, offer the platform to the upcoming projects, right? So the way that uh, it's gonna work, so so to say, I like to call it the heart of the project, is uh, 
the safe trading, right? So we're going to have a platform where projects and the freelancers can connect. And uh, once they connect, so for example, if a project A wants to uh, get some, uh, let's say, graphic design done, right? So they can go on the platform, they can select the search and uh, basically connect with the freelancer that offers some graphic work. And uh, obviously they can do their due diligence, so to say, you know, check out their portfolio, et cetera. So once all that is said and done, uh, they will, uh, or the project will offer the initial price basically, and uh, say they want to offer them to BNB, and then they're going to write a detailed message of the work that they need to be done. And uh, once, that, once that's said and done, the service provider or the freelancer gets a notification. And uh, in the notification, basically, they get to uh, uh, decide whether they want to go with that price or not. So if, uh, if it's um, somebody, you know, that takes their work very seriously, they can counter offer it with, you know, let's say three BNB and saying, this is the minimum I can take. And, uh, you know, my work uh, shows, uh, shows for that. So once the price negotiation is done, let's say, ju let's just say for the sake of the argument, uh, they settle on two and a half BNB to help each other out basically. And the uh, service provider or the freelancer accepts that. The um, project gets a notification that had the work has been accepted, their price has been accepted, and that uh, they will be prompted basically to the payment window, right? So now this is where the beauty of it is, in my opinion. Uh, they deposit those initial funds of two and a half PNB into a smart contract, or what we like to call call uh, an escrow contract, right? So uh, once they're deposited, you know the two and a half PNB gets withdrawn from their wallet, and uh, service provider or the freelancer gets that notification and uh, they basically uh, they start to work right they get a prompt you know message you know saying start work they start to work project gets a notification work has been started and uh, let's say after a couple of days they finish with the assignment and uh, what they basically the project gets a notification they check out their work if everything is you know according to their satisfaction their needs and whatnot they can approve it and now the pro uh, service provider or the freelancer gets a notification you know saying uh, withdraw funds right so they can once they withdraw those funds uh, the work order gets uh, marked as complete so now another thing so basically Basically, once those two have finished uh, on the projects page, it shows that this person has, you know, worked for them basically. And on the uh, freelancers page, it shows that they have worked for such that pro uh, project, right? So it's gonna keep, uh, so to say, history of work, right? So some some uh, freelancers are gonna show that they have. Uh, you know, worked for so many projects, you know, they can uh, link how good those projects were, they can uh, have their ratings and everything like that as well. So, and uh, so basically it's an escrow uh, project where we're the middleman and we're trying to eliminate basically any kind of, you know, bad people trying to scam projects or bad projects trying to scam the uh, freelancers, right? So this way, basically, you know, if somebody does, let's say, try to scam a project, you know, uh, the project can initiate uh, us, so to say. We'll take a look at the message and originally if the work has been done, we'll set up a meeting with both parties and uh, let's say the uh, freelancer doesn't show up to the meeting, you know, the uh, the project will be awarded those funds back. So uh, for the service fee for this, it's only going to be like up to five, five to 10% of every uh, transaction, so to say. So unlike some other platforms that I know, uh, they charge like up to 25, 30% actually. So uh, the more, you know, people we get onboarded, the, the less of the fees are going to be. So. But, uh, but yeah, so that's a little bit about the smart escrow contract and uh, that's basically the um, the heart of the project, right? So there's gonna be a lot other, um, a lot other uh, useful sort of say use causes as well, right? So we're planning on uh, having, uh, for, ex uh, for example, for our token, up to 80% of our revenue is gonna get circulated back into the token. So that token, uh, the token basically, uh, the 80%. So let's say uh, we make about 100 BNB this week for from just from the platform, right? Uh, uh, I'll explain more use causes, but 
for the sake of the argument, once again, uh, let's just say we make 100 BNB, uh, 20 BNB goes towards the staff payments. You know, obviously we got to take care of our team, so we continue with uh, work. But uh, so the 80 percent or 80 BNB, so to say, that's left over, we split it in half. The first half goes towards the token staking. Uh, the second half goes towards the uh, anonymous buybacks, right? So the way that we're going to do the anonymous buybacks, that uh, we have a active doubt team. Uh, they're going to know the basic Basically, all the wallets, whatever that are associated with our project, uh, they're gonna, they're not gonna know when it happens, but they're gonna know that it happened, right? So as soon as we buy, we're gonna tell them, hey, we just bought this much. They started the transaction, so everything's gonna be provided, you know, black and white, right? So that way, you know, we can keep on raising the floor, and uh, we're gonna have now the tokens that we bought back, right? Uh, so those tokens are actually going to be uh, split. Uh, I'm not sure what the ratio is yet. We haven't really uh, decided yet, but uh, let's say 50-50, right? So 50% of those tokens are going to go towards the staking platform for the NFTs. And uh, the other 50%, we're actually going to offer it on sort of say like uh, OTC over the counter. And uh, we'll offer it at a large, larger scale, you know, not to create, you know, somebody that holds like 5% of the tokens, right? But just uh, let's say up to a half a billion tokens or something like that at a price that doesn't include the tax. So essentially we'll be selling portion of our tokens that we used for the, from the buyback uh, back into the uh, ecosystem and everything is gonna go uh, basically towards the LP, the whole 100% of selling those tokens, right? So that's a little bit about that. So we have, uh, we're also gonna have a launch pad. We have everything, uh, the whole plan is laid out there, whatever. Uh, it's going to take us about $30,000, $36,000 to uh, build the whole uh, launch pad, right? So the beauty of it, uh, we're going to charge a flat fee. It's going to be like one or two BNB, nothing less, not well, nothing more, I should say. Uh, it, it's going to be something very affordable, right? Uh, we're also going to ask uh, for uh, up to, I want to say, 2 or 3% of their tokens, of the people launching with us tokens, right? So the reason why we're going to ask that, we're not going to keep any for us, what we're going to do, we're going to have uh, basically, so let's say we get 2% uh, of Project B. And uh, what we're going to do, we're going to airdrop those uh, proportionately, obviously, to all of the TXHD uh, or the transaction hash dome holders, right? So if you imagine <clears throat> the 2%, you know, amongst, let's say, you know, 10,000 holders, it's not going to be too much, right? But also when you think about it, there's going to be, you know, projects interested to launch with us, whatever, just because of the safety and affordability uh, every day, you know, so let's say we we'll launch 10 projects. So now if you get, you know, $10 from one project and uh, there's 10 a day, that's about $100 a day, right? So obviously, you know, the, uh, the projects are, are also going to benefit because, uh, you know, we have uh, so far really good holders, you know, they know, they see what the mission of the project is. So uh, they're, you know, they're going to stay with us a very long time. That's why they're on our DAO team. And uh, yeah, we, we literally talk every day, you know, about new ideas and uh, what's coming up. So <clears throat> anyway, awesome. so that, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so I was I was just going to ask you know, briefly about the um you know the whole deal with the freelancer escrow part. So sure. um is is this like is this would you say this is different? Is like what what would you say is going to separate this project from like and I you know I think we talked about this before, but for people that are listening, um what's going to separate this project from like you know the other people that have tried to do freelancer escrow you know esque projects or whatnot? Like I feel like I've seen. A lot of people try to do this, but um, what, do, what do you feel like is going to separate you guys apart the most? So, yeah, like you said, a lot of people are trying to do what we're doing, you know, with the freelancer thing, but uh, not too many, I want to say, are succeeding. And also not too many are going to have all these uh, other utilities in the project, right? So I only talked about two so far, but we have like... I want to say about five or more, five more, basically, you know, that are going to be there. So we're trying to bring uh, all of the crypto community all around the world, you know, together. And uh, basically, we're trying to be fair 
with uh, everybody who signs up, you know, with us, who works with us. And also we are all about giving back to the community, right? So we're, <clears throat> we're a lot of those other projects, you know, they keep all the fees, you know, they keep all the revenue, all the ads revenue, everything for themselves, you know, they, so they can, you know, either whatever, spend it or something or build up the project. But uh, for us, you know, we're going to take whatever is needed to run it and uh, everything else is going to be uh, added to our staking platform for the uh, tokens. So it's going to be given out, you know, in, in a stable coin, so to say. So whether it's going to be USDT or just BNB, what uh, whatnot, that's undecided yet. But uh, it, it's we're doing this because uh, we don't want, you know, obviously we don't want to dump on our charts. So if we were given out the native token, you know, for the staking, uh, for the token staking, uh, people would sell it. Right. So we're going to give you BNB and you do whatever you want with it. So we're trying to give as much back to the community as possible and uh, <clears throat> establish, uh, so to say, a trust with it. Right. So all these other platforms, as you mentioned, you know, they only have, you know, whether it's either an escrow or whether it's a launch pad or something like that, whatnot. But they don't really give back to the community, you know, uh, especially, you know, since I'm trying to launch this project, I've come to find out a lot of the um a lot of these places that i've talked to you know they're asking for the payment that payment goes to their uh wallet and that's it you know and uh for any kind of giveaways whatever that they do in their ama channels or whatever that's all paid by the project that's not paid by them so if you get thousand dollars for a kyc service none of that goes towards the community so we're going to be giving back to our community, you know, and uh, we're hoping to build up the trust with it, you know, and uh, even if we save somebody, let's say, you know, let's say two projects would save, you know, five BNB each, to me, that's worth it, right? Where we have now established the trust with those two projects, they have lost some time, yes, but their project funds or their, you know, funds in general are safe. Okay, and with the escrow, it's been it's been tested pretty pretty hardcore. Like you guys have tested it pretty. Yes, thoroughly. yes, we have been testing it. Our CTO is actually uh, hired from a company called uh, Scores, uh, or you can find him on Scores.com. The CEO is basically working on our project. Uh, a little bit about the guy, I guess. Uh, he's uh, been in the business for about eighteen years, not just crypto, but uh, you know, coding in general, right? So he's been testing out the uh, the project, whatever, or the escrow uh, accounts uh, for. I want to say about a month and a half or two months now. I've also showcased it to our DAO members as well. Uh, there's a video of some pins somewhere also, but it's uh, very simple to join, right? So if you want to, cho you can join as a project or you can join as a service provider, right? And uh, you can also join as an investor, but you would go under the uh, service provider section and you just wouldn't select anything to be selling. And the reason why we did that, so... You know, as my, like myself, so to say, as well, I started off as an investor, but now, you know, I moved on to the selling, to selling services, like, you know, for example, shilling as well. And uh, now I'm a project owner. Right. So we're allowing members, you know, that join as investors who are, you know, serious, so to say, to have an ability to change later on into a service provider or a project, you know, for that matter. So. But, uh, but yeah, so everything has been tested. I have showcased it. You know, it's easy to sign up. You connect uh, your, uh, you connect the platform basically to your MetaMask and uh, you can input your details. So you can, if you don't want to put your real name out there, that's fine. But uh, we will have, uh, you know, uh, KYC services as well. Uh, we're going to try to be sort of say you know you can never be too safe whatever somebody's always going to find a way around it but uh we have uh we have you know thought about it for a very long time we're going to have uh uh, basically, uh, what should I call it? We're going to have a, a third party service called Identify from UK. Uh, that's, you know, first step, so to say. We're going to have contracts as well uh, to sign. And uh, also, we're going to have a basically mail in code. So, our KYC services, we're going to be doing, you know, it's going to be by the uh, appointment. And uh, some of them can take up to like, you know, a month, depending how long uh, it takes them to verify everything, right? So, it's not going to be you know just one day done and you're whatever free to go and uh, also the kyc services is gonna uh, you instead of a batch you're gonna be getting an nft 
with your, so to say, with your personal information on the NFT. And uh, the, that information is going to be basically, you know, uh, your Telegram handle and the last date of the wallet that you're working with on our platform, right? So if any of that changes, uh, there's going to be a registry list on the website. And uh, if anything changes, basically, your status as a KYC is going to be revoked. And, uh, you know, in, in worst case scenario for the people, uh, if they end up scamming somebody, now we have the contract that they signed and uh, they're going to be, you know, basically responsible. We can go after them legally. We can go after them, uh, you know, letting the local authorities know. Uh, and also, as I mentioned, you know, there's going to be a code mailed in to their address that they provided us with, with a contract in there as well. So if they try, uh, you know, to use somebody else's address and that uh, that address now gets the mail, they're going to see it, you know, black and white. If you provide this code to somebody that does, that hasn't, you know, requested it from this house, you know, if it's used in any kind of way, now this house, this address is liable for any damages caused by the person as well. So uh, we are, like I said, the company that we're working with, uh, they're also able to do background checks as well so on the registry list everything is going to be there and uh, it's not going to be uh, public so to say but if anything you know if your uh, KYC gets revoked it's going to go public basically so people can you know sue you for whatever you want or the address that they verify that they are who they are with okay and the, I always ask this you know for projects like this you know with the whole escrow thing it's like you know I feel like there has to be some sort of like, um, you know, like, you know, ideally you want everything decentralized, right? But there has to be some sort of like centralized aspect to it in regards to like, like, you know, like PayPal, like, you know, something like PayPal to escrow service. People use it for like, you know, stuff like this to where, you know, basically once it's proven that, you know, the, the, the buyer uh, got the item that was sent to them, like through PayPal or whatever they're paying for, um, then, you know, they'll release the money, but sometimes there's disputes. Right. So it's like, I'm, I'm just curious, like um, what, what do you guys have planned for that? And like, what, what would, what would, what would happen? Like say uh, someone paid my group. Right. And then they were, they say, I, re I thought I rendered my services and they thought completely opposite, you know, what, what would be the, what would be like the, the um you know what would y'all do in a situation like that where both parties are pretty much saying like hey you know i did what he asked me to do and then is it like you know because there is a lot of times like where people pay you know a call channel or something to post or something and they're just like oh you didn't bring enough volume well it's like i mean was the volume on part of any of the deal so is it like something like that where you guys are going to like have like like unless it's written in like it has to be written in stone and like whatever deal they're making and if it's like like say someone pays a group and they're just like, they're just paying for a post. Right. And that's like, there's nothing else like written in stone outside of like, we're paying this group for a post, but like then the person who pays for it is unhappy. Right. Um, like what would, what's, how do y'all plan to, you know, kind of mediate that? Right. No, yeah, no, that's a good question. But uh, as you said, uh, so for example, you as an AMA channel, right. I want to hire you. Uh, once I hire you, I understand, so to say, my uh, risk, you know, to reward ratio and whatnot. So you as a project or me as a project wanting to hire you as a, let's say, you know, service provider, so to say, I would be responsible for, you know, writing out, so to say, a message to you, right? That, that's where we're going to base it off of. So if I tell you, you know, I want you, to, I want to do an AMA with you, whatever, here's what we're paying, you accept it, you know, done deal, right? then if there's a dispute between uh, the, our team would go into it, we would read the original message and say, or, you know, basically we would say, okay, so there's no, any kind of contract. You guys just wanted an AMA. You got, you basically provided them with how much you're willing to pay. They accepted. Did you have an AMA? And then, uh, you know, you would say, okay, yes, we did. Right. And uh, case closed. You had an AMA and uh, there's no, you know, you didn't sign any kind of a contract saying, you know, or any kind of uh, <clears throat> promises, so to say. So Yeah, yeah, that's more what I'm getting. Yeah, I feel like that's right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, I feel like, because I feel like people would, like, for sure try to take advantage of that if, if there oh, was, like, kind of, like, a loophole, yeah, yeah. Yep, no loopholes. Everything is going to be, you know, towards the common sense, whatever. And uh, for example, if uh, if uh, let's say uh, we hire a graphic designer, right? We we take a, we take a look at their uh, page first of all. If they're KYC, you know, with us. If they're, you know, 
basically, if you KYC through us, you're going to get a verification sign on the uh, platform, right? So if they're not, if they are, if they're not, it doesn't really matter. But, you know, uh, me as a project, I'm doing my due diligence, right? Like, for example, even other uh, service providers uh, that I go, that I went through before or whatever. So, for example, let's say, uh, let's say Fiverr, right? Uh, I, I've been there before. I checked out their um I checked out their portfolios and everything like that. You know, I, I paid them. I got basically the same kind of work uh, results that the, that they are showcasing, right? So if a project says, okay, well, I'm not happy with this, but then we see, you know, they look almost, you know, identical to the others. There's nothing, you know, we can do about that, right? But it's this is mainly basically like for, you know, for example, like as I'm sitting here, I'm looking at like 30 messages right now from, uh, you know, people joining from other places and then they're DMing me saying, oh, would you like these services, whatever, you know? So I, I'm pretty good. Like I said, you know, I used to be a shiller. I can read a, a Telegram channel to tell you if it's botted, you know, within a second. But uh, yeah, so those people are, you know, are always asking me whatever, uh, if I want to do the service with them or something like that. So I'm doing my due diligence, you know, basically to know what I'm working with. But if I hire somebody and I see, you know, their portfolio is really good, right? But they show me the Mickey Mouse, whatever, you know, into my thing, then uh, our team, you know, we would sit down, take a look at their portfolio and their previous work take a look what they provided for you, take a look at the message, you know, that was, you know, sort of say written and uh, we'll, we'll have uh, like short videos and stuff like that, you know, how to uh, protect yourself, so to say, right? So we're going to try to mediate as much as possible, but if somebody provides you with work and uh, you haven't, you know, sort of say covered yourself, you know, say being detailed on it, uh, there's nothing that we can do about it, right? Well, we're only here to stop, you know, sort of say uh, you're paying somebody, let's say 10 BNB or whatever to do some big marketing for you and they, they, they don't do any of it. And uh, when we have the meeting, you know, they don't show up, you get those funds back. But, you know, if you hire somebody, you know, just saying, I need a picture of this, whatever done, here's two BNB. They provide you the picture exactly what you asked, but, you know, you're now you're not happy with it. That's what you asked for, so. Uh, we'll, we'll have like uh, some contracts as well that uh, can be sort of say filled out or guidance for, for the projects, you know, how to cover themselves. Awesome. 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 Yeah. Um, yeah. I've, I've always felt like, you know, like this is definitely something that's needed in the space. And I, I've told you this several times. It's just a matter about, you know, who, do, who does it the right way, you know, and it's like, right, right. if you guys can catch the catch the eyes of, you know, influencers and investors and people, you know, trying to you know, that would essentially need this, you know, maybe running, running plays like you guys or, you know, whatever it may be, you know, trying to pay for marketing. Um, I definitely can see, you know, people using a service like this if, you know, it just gets in the right hands and it's being ran by the right people. And I, I honestly am not, I honestly am surprised that like one of these has not, you know, kind of like popped off a bit more. Oh, definitely. And as you mentioned, you know, it, it is essentially decentralized space, right? But <clears throat> like, I, I don't know about you, but I have been scammed before, right? I, I know a lot of us have been scammed here before and uh, there's nothing we can do about it. Like, for example, I tracked uh, one of the scammers, whatever, that ran with 2BNB at the time. And uh, <clears throat> they got, they deposited that and they keep on getting it, right, from all the sites into a main account, so to say. And it had over half a million dollars, right? Is Binance going to care about that? Probably not, you know, they, they, they're they going to let it happen. Is Ethereum going to take care of that? No, they're not. So we, uh, I, I feel since we started or since I started, so to say, in like early 2020 with the uh, crypto, that a lot basically what happened, there was, let's say, a million people uh, that started with crypto, right? And uh I would say close to about 50% of them got scammed, whether it was a rug pull, whether it was, you know, service scam or something along the lines, they got scammed, right? So now you have 50% that's left, basically, you know, trying to make it somewhere as well. And we lost, you know, all those investors and the good projects. And don't get me wrong, uh, 
I've seen a lot of good projects out there, you know, trying to make uh, the space, so to say, better or given good utilities, but they just, you know, they can't make it out there, you know, because there's no more, no more good uh, investors, so to say. So we need to do something, uh, like you said, you know, like with something with these services to have them, um, to have at least a doorstep right so we can check you at the doorstep you know we're going to make sure that you don't do nothing bad but what kind of project you want to invest to what kind of project you want to make that's uh you know sort of say different but we're going to make sure uh you know do our best basically so that you don't scam anybody in the process right you can make your money the right way but you know just receiving money for you know just being smart enough to trick some people that's, you know, in my opinion, that's not a skill. That's, you know, cowardness, you know. No, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Yeah. Um, so what what um, what uh, are you guys planning to do regarding uh, free sale in private? So I know you guys are planning to, um, you know, hold, you know, some raises soon. What, how much are you planning to raise total in between both of those? And then um, can you give a little bit more info on when the raises are planned and then um, kind of like what you guys plan to do with the funds, et cetera, <laughs> things of that nature? Yeah, sure. So uh, we had our uh, seed sale. Uh, we closed it, I think, October 24th, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was a Monday. But uh, we filled it out at uh, 50 BNB. And uh, we actually um, we changed our uh, tokenomics a, a little bit uh, here and there. Uh, just to, you know, sort of say accommodate everybody. I, I didn't want to give out as many tokens, you know, for as much, uh, uh, for for example, for BNB as uh, we, we are now. But uh you know, the reality is no, nobody's going to let the team sort of say hold like, you know, 80 percent of the tokens and uh, give them out uh, a little bit. Right. So I understand that this is the route that we're going. So our seed sale uh, filled out at 50 BNB. It's just uh, it's private investors. Uh, it's basically me going from, you know, person to person that I know, known in the past. I know that they're a good person, you know, and uh, talking with them, explaining the project to them. And uh, once we filled it out, uh, we gathered all those people in the one group. Uh, that's uh, basically our DAO right now, right? So uh, the funds from that were basically have, have gone all into the platform, right? I have all the receipts to prove it. Uh, our CTO has all the receipts to prove it. Our DAO has seen all the receipts for it, right? So we built a platform. Uh, we have some UIs that we haven't released yet as well. Uh, we have the signup is done for it. Uh, we have the smart contract is done for, done for it as well. Has been tested in the test net. Uh, the video is there. Uh, we test, once again, we tested it out in our uh, DAO team as well. And, uh, but, uh, but yeah, I, I do see a couple people in here from our DAO, actually. Uh, Cryptar is uh, uh, one of uh, very good friends of mine as well. We met actually in INDC also, and uh, uh, he's seen the video. Uh, so yeah, so basically the seed sale has been spent on uh, building the platform and, uh, uh, but yeah, so uh, about our private sale, right? So our private sale is actually tomorrow, right? We have uh, some whitelist uh, giveaways going on as well. So I'll use this opportunity, opportunity I guess, to let you know uh, during the AMA and, and today, basically, if you are interested in the whitelist, just DM me your wallet, I'll get you added. So, but uh, anyways, the whitelist uh, or the private sale for tomorrow, it's at 1800 UTC. First uh, five minutes uh, is going to be for the whitelisted people only, right? After five minutes, it's going to be open to public. So uh, we have planned basically to raise 100 BNB tomorrow. And uh, most of those funds, I don't want to say all funds, obviously, whatever, but most of those funds are going to go towards the marketing push uh, towards the pre-sale, right? So we're looking to have... Uh, you know, AMA with different channels, uh, push here, push there. And once again, you know, every, every single transaction is going to be provided. It's going to be proved, you know. Uh, I know a lot of projects, they don't like to, you know, tell you how much they paid for this group, how much they paid for this group, whatever. Uh, that's what I'm doing. You know, I'll show every transaction, whatever, coming out from the wallet, whatever. And uh, we're planning on, you know, pushing it to the launch. So uh, obviously, as I mentioned, you know, save some funds, you know, just uh, in the in case and some funds for the LP as well. So uh, 
I'm, I can't say how many, whatever. It just depends, you know, who can we get, you know, to market for us and uh, to uh, push us to, right? So for the pre-sale, uh, pre-sale is going to be set basically for, I want to say, about a week after the pre uh, private sale fills out. Uh, it's going to be 250 BNB uh, hard cap. And uh, I want to say about 80% of that or so uh, we're going to use towards the LP, right? So, and... Uh, once that fills out, we're going to do everything right. We're going to put it towards the LP, save the other funds, you know, for the rainy day, whatever, a couple follow-ups, AMAs after launch, and, uh, you know, go from there. So the the next uh, step, I guess, for the platform itself, uh, once we do get some more funds, is to uh, is would be to release the UI for the signups and the smart escrow contract, right? Uh, then uh, we're going to save up for, the, for building the launch pad doing everything right obviously testing it out as well and uh yeah so uh, we do have our once again our kyc services and works as well the plan would be to get the contract with the identify from uk and uh, get those services running uh, obviously get the legal papers and everything as well you know to for the people that want to kyc with us you know sign and whatnot uh we also going to have a streaming uh platform as well so basically there's going to be a calendar Hello? What's up, Raymond? Nobody needs to uh, Yeah, I don't know. I, don't know. I muted him, bro. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, he's never but, uh, but yeah, so there's, there's, yeah, all good. But, uh, but yeah, so there's going to be streaming services as well on the website. So there's going to be a calendar. You can purchase a streaming space uh, once you do. Uh, it's basically you're going to be able to stream to everybody from the platform. Uh, it's going to act, so to say, as, uh, you know, you're going to have your video there. You're going to have the text uh, below. You're going to be able to interact with our holders of, and the holders of, you know, different platforms as well, whatever, whoever, you know, shows up there, right? And uh, all of the signups, you know, are going to be free. So, and you don't even have to sign up, so to say, to, you know, watch somebody's AMA, but you do have to sign up to interact with, the, with them there. So we'll have those streaming services. Uh, we also are planning on uh, building an exchange and listing, so to say, for the project that actually launched with us. And uh, this way, you know, we don't have to have, everybody knows where to buy uh, Bitcoin. Everybody knows where to buy Ethereum. Everybody knows where to buy BNB and whatnot. But a lot of people, they don't know where to buy, you know, uh, altcoins or new projects coming out, right? So we're going to have an exchange just for those uh, people, basically, that launch with us. Uh, we're going to, obviously, everybody's going to, those people will have to be KYC and use our launch pad and all that. So, but, uh, but yeah, so they'll be able to basically click on the, uh, on their, you know, listing, whatever. They'll be able to, obviously, connect their wallet and purchase that. Uh, we're also going to have some crypto news and whatnot related, you know. And, uh, yeah, so we're. As I mentioned, you know, we're trying to br bring everything crypto under one roof, you know, uh, obviously hire out uh, more people, make different teams, you know, for all these categories. And, uh, and yeah, you know, we're, I, I want to make it safe, you know, for people, uh, for the projects and freelancers, so they don't have to worry, you know, about their uh, funds, so to say. So, like, for example, like, if I pay uh, an AMA, let's say, you know, a week ago, whatever, and... Uh, I'm going to be worried until that AMA happens, right? Because, you know, who's it to say that they can say, you know, you never sent this or you sent it the wrong address, right? That's that's just the gist of it, so to say. So, yeah, we want to make everybody safe and uh, we want to give back to the community as well. Yeah, yeah, bro. I feel you. It's kind of, kind of random. I had a buddy who paid like a, a fake Caesar yesterday. He paid him for Airbnb. <laughs> So like, you know, yeah, even, for yeah. th even for things like that, like, you know, just having like a place where it's like, oh, these are the verified people to pay. So like, you know, exactly. it, would be, it would be kind of like a, something to mitigate that issue too. Right. Then so this is sort of say going back to the original uh, or the beginning of the AMA, uh, when I worked for Meta Ruffy, actually, we had a marketer from, uh, from TikTok and YouTube, right? He showed me his uh, accounts, whatever. He actually even edited out in the bio of the TikTok, you know, like saying Meta Ruffy, whatever right? He made the video, he edited their channel to put the name of them and uh, gave us the video, whatever, we reviewed it. And uh, once we paid him, he blocked us and we never heard of them again. And that's the account actually that I told you that I tracked our funds, whatever, going all the way to the wallet that had like half a million dollars in it. 
God and, damn. And, and, yeah, and and it, just, it wasn't even in like a. Coming. It was like sitting in just like a, a regular old wallet. It wasn't even in like an exchange. Yeah, just the that's regular insane, old wallet. Bro. And that's, that's what I'm insane. saying. You know, Binance is not going to care for that. You know, they they just care for those uh, fees, whatever. And, you know, I, I, I don't want to say that they don't want to care for it. You know, they obviously want it to be safe. But they don't have the time and resources to catch everybody, you know, you know, basically, let's say this account uh, or this wallet has half a million funds. How do you know? Uh, who came from, you know, since it, it's all decentralized. So that's why I said, you know, we want to be that doorstep, you know, so, so to say, at least for our platform, you know, people using uh, using it, you know, and, and you don't even have to like buy our coin or anything like that to use uh, uh, our platform, right? So if you're a, let's say, project and you want to hire, let's say somebody wants to hire you, right? They, they, you can just tell them, hey, go to the whatever TX hash, you know, platform, uh, sign up there, whatever, we'll do the transaction through there, you know, this way, I don't have to worry about the funds, you don't have to worry about the funds and end, end, end of the day, right? So, but uh, but yeah, and like as I mentioned also, you know, people that do use our platform are going to benefit with basically having the um, having the, you know, the revenue coming from the platform, from the launch pad, uh, from all of these other services that we're going to be providing. Everything's going to be, you know, towards the giveaways, towards the uh, staking, the token staking, towards the NFT staking, uh, towards the buybacks, everything like that, right? So we want to grow ourselves, grow the platform, grow our uh, investors, you know, with giving them more uh, diverse portfolio, you know, from all these projects coming to us. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know how else I guess to explain it, but uh, I personally want to make everybody feel safe and have their funds safe, but what and how they invest it to after they receive them, that's completely up to them. No, yeah, and I understand what, what you're saying, like with Binance, I do feel like that's one of the thing that, things that CZ is trying to like make them stand out is like, um, you know, essentially not trying to really tamper with like these uh, DeFi wallets or, you know, or right. really trying to mess around with them. So. I don't really. I don't think unless well, like, unless some, unless it's taken from them. Like for yeah, example, unless there's some. Yeah, oh yeah, exactly. Like with the anchor exploit or like shit like that yeah, with exactly. these exploits. Yeah, unless it's taken from them. But right, um, right. I, I think unless there's some crazy regulation that you know probably and it's possible. It's definitely possible to happen. But unless there's some like crazy regulation that hits, I don't think Binance will probably ever get involved in that. You know, so. Yeah, yeah. As you mentioned, I I don't think so either. But like I said, you know, if I can help two people, whatever, and my project, you know, is there for others to use, that's proof of concept to me. Exactly, exactly. I feel you. I feel you on that. So there's there's some good questions here in the uh, text chat that I'm seeing. I do want to touch on a couple of them. So uh, one of the ones I'm seeing that I did want to ask myself too is what. Um, so I think you touched on it a little bit, but just uh, to kind of highlight it. What value is the um, is this going to bring to the holders of the token and the chart essentially? So the investors, what value is um, the you know what you what you guys are essentially going to have going on with the uh, escrow service and the kind of like freelancer Fiverr type platform? Um, what what value is it going to provide to the investors? Right. So as I mentioned before, with our launch pad, we're going to be taking, you know, let's say two, three percent of those tokens. And let's say we have 10,000 holders. Right. So those two, three percent are going to be divided amongst uh, 10,000 uh, holders, obviously, you know, proportionate to their uh, holdings, you know, and uh so that's one way, right? So another way is 80% of the revenue from the website is going to go back to the token. So it's going to go back to the token in uh, form of just pure BNB towards the staking on the token. So if you stake the token uh, on our platform, there's going to be some BNB for you to claim, right? Uh, I'm not going to promise you crazy like APY rates, like 1,000% or something like that, where if you invest, you know, two BNB, you'll be able to take out five BNB a day. You know, that's not going to happen, right? But all of this will add up, I promise you that, right? So if you make $10, $10 from every launch that's out there from those two, two or 3%, you know, that we take for, for from the launch pad, if you make, you know, $10 from our... Uh, uh, from our staking, then NFT staking, then, uh, you know, buybacks, basically, it's going to make your, uh, your basically, so to say, uh, whatever your, your bag, you know, with us worth more, right? So 
there's a little bit of everything, like I said, that we're bringing, that we're putting back into the token itself, you know, to sort of say, give to the community that has supported us, uh, has supported us and is still supporting us to the, to the today's date, basically give it back to them. Right. We're all, my plan, you know, as a CEO of the project is only to take what's needed to run the project, to run, uh, develop the platform further and pay the team, right? If I don't get paid, that's okay. I'm going to put it towards the, uh, towards my team because my team is what makes this project. I don't make this project. I'm just, you know, basically a project owner, but I have a heart and I want to give back to the community. So it's not just one way that the users are going to benefit. There's, like I mentioned, you know, the uh, revenue from the uh, platform. So that's basically the transaction fees from the uh or service fees, I should say, through the escrow, uh, the listings, the exchange, the uh, streaming, the KYC, all these uh, uh, exchanges as well, and all these are going to add up to some amount, you know, for your initial investment to pay off. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. So with the with the things like the launch pad, so um, you guys already have pretty much like the escrow contract, you know, and then the fiber platform. Fiber type platform, you that's pretty much something that's pretty much going to be ready at launch. Um, with yeah, like the launch, it's just the UI level for it. Okay, and then things like the launch pad, that's def, that's that's not going to be ready at launch, right? Like how far down the I, road? I, right. So it, I, yeah, it's not going to be ready. We tried, but uh, like I said, you know, to make the launch pad the, to the specifications that we want, it's going to take uh, about thirty six thousand dollars, right? I don't have that sitting in my pocket. Whatever. I, I wish I did. I wish I could do all of this without any sales, whatever. Just have a fair launch, but I, I'm, I'm unable to do that, right? So. We will, uh, we will obviously have some ta taxes, whatever. Uh, the taxes right now, I believe, are 10 and 12. Uh, they're only going to be there for like a, a week or two, whatever, just to get everybody who is trying to, you know, pump and dump it basically, you know, to, uh, so we can gather some of those funds. Once we gather those funds, it's going towards uh, building the uh, launch pad. We have everything written out basically for it, all of the steps, how and what we need to do. <clears throat> and the C, uh, CTO that we have... Uh, hired right now he said just uh give him the sign he'll have it he'll have it ready and tested you know with his team uh, as soon as possible so just to give you an idea from the uh on the platform itself with the contract with everything he's got him and six people working on it right so uh he's got a huge team and uh, as i mentioned you know he's been in the uh business for like coding and whatnot for and developing for about 18 years is uh one of his clients is actually binance uh, he's offered us uh to to make a pitch deck basically, you know, to have him deliver to them uh, directly, you know, so we don't got to go through all these hoops. But, you know, I told him, let's wait, let's uh, establish something, let's get a name for us and, uh, you know, we'll go from there. But, uh, but yeah, other than that, he's worked for United Nations, he's, uh, you know, worked for quite a few different uh, places, you know, well-known places, right, developing and coding for them. So uh, he, I, if anybody that I know right now in the space, whatever, he's the guy to, uh, for it basically to do it. So, and everything, you know, we're not taking, you know, somebody's source code or whatever. We're building everything from scratch for the, for the launch pad. And obviously, you know, meanwhile, we're going to see how much it's going to cost for like for the streaming platform and everything like that and have, uh, you know, from his team, somebody else, you know, working on, uh, on that at the same time as well. So. Awesome, 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 awesome. So you said the uh, crab sale will be taking place uh, this weekend? Uh, it's actually tomorrow. Tomorrow, oh, tomorrow. At okay, so it's Friday, Friday. Okay, so it's Friday, yes, Friday. I mean, that's, that's, that's the weekend. That's the weekend, bro. Friday the weekend, don't forget. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. But, uh, but yeah, but, yeah, so that's... So what, what time tomorrow? Uh, 1800 UTC. Okay, so 18 UTC. So uh, about 24 UTC hours from now. <laughs> And are you ready? I, I'm ready. I'm ready. We've been, you know, working and struggling and, you know, having ups and downs with this for, you know, majority of the year, but we're ready. All right. So I just reforded all uh, relevant information regarding uh, the, uh, the, uh, the project. So if you look at the contracts there, the website, the telegram, et cetera, um, information regarding the seed sale that they did, the private sale. Um, and then uh, launch, you know, and things of that nature. 
So um, just just to clarify, for people that would be investing in the private, um, the launch is planned. It says one to two weeks down the road, like after the private. Yeah. So basically, you know, if uh, let's say we fill out the wholesale tomorrow, I'm getting on calls with uh, you know the connections that I have right now. Uh, we're setting up AMAs with them and we're launching. Okay, or you know, okay. going towards the to private be, or pre Just to be completely stuff. clear about this too. This is this is going to launch on eight, right? Yes, yes, this is okay. uh, going to launch on EAT. Uh, the original plan was for BSC. Uh, however, the DAO and myself, you know, we've been taking a look at the BSC launches uh, this year and the Ethereum launches this year. And, uh, you know, we just decided that it would be a best step to go towards the Ethereum. That's why uh, if you take a look at our channel, you know, there's uh, talk about BNB, talk about Ethereum. We're just uh, basically... The seed sale started in BNB, so we're basing it off of that. But as soon as we get to the pre-sale, uh, we're going to convert. So let's say $300 for the BNB, we're going to divide it by Ethereum, and that's what the price is going to be set for the same token. So, but Ethereum is the platform that we're launching on. Okay, so so tomorrow when people want to buy in, um, they will they could they'll invest in BNB, but um, they will launch and they'll get airdropped in Ethereum essentially whenever it goes live. Awesome, awesome, awesome. awesome. Um, let me see if there's any, there's a few more community questions. Oh, I saw another one that was good. Uh, they were asking, what, what was your involvement in Meta Ruffy? Um, I mean, I honestly, uh, that was a pretty good project for a minute. So, I mean, I don't think anything bad about it. I know I had some stuff going on at the end, but I mean, uh, what was what was your involvement in it? So I, I didn't have like uh, there wasn't really a title whatever for uh, for what I did you know at least not in my opinion, but uh, basically I was doing their marketing right. Uh, well, a lot of the portions of their marketing for what I could get for free because uh, long story short we yeah. Anyways, so basically I would wake up in the morning, we would, uh, I would have the uh, shilling scheduled, so to say, like rates, whatever. Uh, we would, you know, go to bigger channels. Uh, we would talk uh, subtly about the project, whatever. Uh, that would be the soft live shilling, you know. Uh, we would hold that for anywhere from one to four hours, right? After that, I, I actually made their, uh, all of their giveaways that they did uh, every day. I think it was uh, 13 or 1400 uh, my time, so it would be about 1800 UTC, let's call it. Uh, their duck game, their trivia, all of those uh, were hosted by me, uh, done by me. Then uh, after that, you know, obviously I would check my DMs. I would go through all of the marketing proposals, uh, go through the good ones, you know, take care of the bad ones, whatever, uh, forward it to the team, you know, whether, whether they wanted to go proceed with them or not, that was up to them. But uh, yeah, that I would uh, gather all the wallets from the... Um, Basically, from their uh, giveaways for the shilling and everything like that, make sure everything was nice and you know neatly done for them. So all they gotta do is just copy paste whatever the payout was, and uh, yeah. So I did their sort of say like guerrilla marketing, right? Uh, I, I didn't have a budget, whatever. I had to do what I could for free. So yeah, that's that's, that's amazing. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, bro, I'm interested to see how this does. Um, you know, you guys have my full support and, you know, I would say this to every project that comes in here. If you guys um, just want to share anything uh, when I'm not active, just feel free to come post it in here. And if I see it, I'll pin it. Um, but yeah, I would definitely be uh, probably putting a little bag in the private sale myself. I do do like how you presented everything and, uh, you know, interested to see how this does. And I'm rooting for you guys. So, yeah. I appreciate you. All right, brother. Uh, yeah, well, we will uh, talk to you. We will talk to you again, I'm sure, pretty soon. I'm pretty sure we'll see a, a nice little feel tomorrow, and I'm pretty sure we'll see a, a nice launch here in a couple of weeks. So I'm um, looking forward to that. I'm and excited. then um, I will send over you the recording as soon as we end the AMA. But before we do that, is there anything you'd like to share um, before we end here? Uh, yeah, no, I, I mean, thank you for having me, you know, once again. Uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. If anybody has any questions, head over to our community, ask the questions. If you don't want to ask those questions in the community, my DMs, you know, personally on both of these accounts that I'm streaming with right now are, you know, open 24-7. Uh, I'll get to you as soon as possible. I can't promise you, you know, you know one second response. But uh, otherwise, if anybody is interested, you know, with what we're doing and wants to contribute, you know, to push this project further, uh, once again, DM your wallet. I'll get you added to the whitelist. Uh, we do have, you know, some wallets gathered right now. I have more coming in through as well. But uh, yeah, first five minutes, you know, it's all going to be whitelisted. So after that, it's going to go towards the public. So if you want to have that head, head start, so to say, 
just DM your wallet uh, just to have it, just in case, you know, you never know, you might uh, be interested. Uh, we do have a couple more AMAs coming. You can talk to me, uh, ask any questions that you got. Uh, you know, I'm being as transparent as possible. I'm KYC. I'm uh, fully doxed to the current investors right now, which are DAO investors that I'm planning to fully dox basically to, uh, uh, you know, to everybody else. But uh, we do have an LLC. So, so to say, I mean, if you wanted to know who I am, whatever, just take a look at the LLC. It's uh, registered in Florida, Boynton Beach, Florida, and uh, you'll know exactly who I am. And you know, it's basically I'm doxxed. So uh, I'm not looking to run away with anybody's funds. I, I truly have everything the best in my heart. So I appreciate you. All right, you guys. all right. I know you got to get over to the AMA right now. Bossy's all right. So let you go. Yes, sir. But uh, we wish you the best of luck, brother. And I'll send you the recording after. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank Bye, guys. Bye, guys.